Hello everyone, welcome to today's lecture, Cleaning and Shaping, Part 2. Topic Learning Outcome Discuss the objectives of cleaning and shaping, which is covered in the last lecture. Today we are going to describe the step-by-step -step, uh, procedure, step back, crown down and hybrid techniques and describe briefly the balance force technique and demonstrate cleaning and shaping of root canal employing step back and hybrid techniques in compliance with objectives of cleaning and shaping. First one is techniques of root canal preparation apical to coronal that includes standard preparation and step back preparation. So apical to coronal as the name suggests from the apical portion of the root to the orifice. Second one is coronal to apical that is step down technique and crown down pressureless technique. So crown down means from the crown orifice to the root canal apex it is prepared. Then the hybrid technique it is a combination of step back technique and step down procedure. Next is root apex anatomy. So for the success of the root canal therapy you should know about the morphology or the anatomy of the root apex that includes minor apical diameter, apical foramen, radiographic apex, anatomic apex. So your obturation is going to end at the minor apical diameter which you won't be able to visualize in a radiograph. So according to Cutler it is about 0.5 to 1 mm from the radiographic apex. So there is the point where you should terminate your obturation or in other words your working length should be till the minor apical diameter if it is goes beyond your success of the therapy is reduced so next is standardized preparation techniques which comes under apical to coronal preparation which is introduced by Ingle that includes uh, first you have to gain access and after that you should have a straight line axis then determine the working length next is selection of the initial apical file that means the first file which binds to the apex so consider that it is s10 then you have to do the circumferential filing to increase the apical constriction two to three file sizes greater than the initial apical files for example your initial apical file size is 10 then you will increase up to 2 to 3 file size so 15 20 and 25 so consider 25 as your master comp or master apical file then you do the circumferential filing to create the taper so that's easier one in the cleaning and shaping next comes the step back preparation otherwise called as telescopic or serial root canal preparation so it emphasizes on keeping the apical preparation small in original position and producing a greater taper coronally. So the preparation is done in two phases. So the phase one involves the preparation of the apical constriction and phase two involves the preparation of the remaining canal that is from the middle third to the coronal preparation. And it is introduced by Mullany. So phase one that is the apical preparation up to the file size 25 that is your master apical file to the full working length with recapitulation using prior size files. For that first you should have a good access preparation then locate the canal orifice then establish the working length. So before that you should use a smaller size file negotiate and find the patency of the canal once the patency is achieved then you have to enlarge the apical part of the canal like 10 15 20 and 25 it is shown in the picture so consider 20 mm as your working length then you have to sequentially enlarge the apical portion of the canal from 10 15 20 and 25 and 25 is considered as your master apical file that is your 
phase 1 preparation of the apical portion of the canal and you have to be really careful your coronal reference point remains same when you do the preparation from 10, 15, 20 and 25. So now phase 2 that is the stepping back, stepping back procedure in 1 mm increments and recapitulation with a smaller size file till the full working length. So stepping back procedure means once you have decided to go with the 25 size file as your master apical file, you take the 30 mm file and reduce your working length to 1 mm that is what we call as stepping back. So your 30 size file is now 19 mm then you do the stepping back clean and shaping again with that file size after that you take the 35 and reduce the working length one more mm that is 18 mm again you do the continue the cleaning and shaping with the 35 size file then you take the 40 size file and again reduce one more mm that is 17 mm so your previously your master apical file size was 25 at a working length of 20 now you have gone up to 40 and your working length is reduced to 17 mm so you have reduced 1 mm short with each file size up to 40 and you have continued the cleaning and shaping that is what we call as stepping back procedure in increments once you do the stepping back procedure that means you might get a step like preparation in your canal in the picture you can see so during the course of the stepping back procedure you have to copiously irrigate the canal to take out the debris out of the canal so you have to irrigate passively with the syringe and needle and take out the debris completely once it is done your phase 2 is done again phase 2a so your phase 2 got two more phases that is phase 2a and phase 2b basically called as refining phases so you are stepping back procedure is done with one month increments so your coronal part is not cleaned properly so in order to create a space for the coronal portion you take the gate sclid and number 234 and are used to create the coronal and middle preparation so basically you take your coron uh, gate sclerin and take it inside the canal and enlarge the coronal or the middle preparation middle canal preparation to refine the canal so that you will get a taper so that is your refining phase 2a next one is refining phase 2b that includes return to your master apical file that is size 25 and short of the working length take a vertical push pull strokes so basically in order to smoothen the walls you have created a step like structure over the canal of the apical portion of the canal during the stepping back procedure in order to smoothen the surface you are going to do a circumferential filing with your master apical file make sure your file doesn't goes beyond your working length that is previously 20 mm so that is the refining phase 2b so coming back to the stepping back procedure first first one master apical preparation after that you go for the phase 2 that is the stepping back procedure this is the important step 3 5 side you are stepping back and reducing 1 mm once it is done you are enlarging the coronal portion with gate sclerin then finally smoothening the steps you created with the stepping back procedure that is the refining phase 2b with the help of master apical file with the circumferential filing so what are the advantages better tactile awareness Keep apical preparation small in its original position and have a gradual taper. Ability to prepare apical stop and avoids sipping. Unnecessary cutting of the apical portion of the tooth. 
then coming to the disadvantages chances of pushing debris into the periradicular tissue so basically you don't have much space inside the canal so when you irrigate that time you might push the debris beyond the epochs working length likely to change as the canal curvatures are eliminated if there is a curvature you have to be really careful because if you are not doing the filing properly you might straighten the curve so that is about the step back preparation coming to step down preparation so coronal to the apical foramen so first suggested by schilder in 1974 so the principle is coronal aspect of the root canal is prepared and cleaned before the apical part basically you are preparing from the coronal portion towards the apex of the root so how is the procedure so you can break it into three headings that is coronal axis radicular axis and apical preparation so coronal axis involves you have to prepare a axis opening for the desired tooth then you have to gain a straight line axis once you gain a straight line axis into the canal you irrigate the canal with sodium hypochlorite after that your radicular axis is prepared going to prepare so first you take a h file size 15 and take it to the middle third of the canal and try to negotiate once it is done you can go for the next size that is 20 and followed by 25 so the middle third of the canal is prepared with the h files 15 20 and 25 then you can use a gg drill size 2 and size 3 to create much more preparation over the coronal as well as middle third of the canal once you prepared the coronal and middle third of the canal then you have to irrigate the canal nicely make sure the debris is removed then you can take the working length negotiate with the smaller size file 10 size file you can call it as then take it to the working length or the pre measured working length from the iopa then you can negotiate and once it is reached to that working length you can go for the working length iopa once the working length is decided then you can go for the third phase that is the apical preparation that is done like step back procedure you have to enlarge three size at least so consider and 10 is your initial apical file you have to use a k file 15 20 and 25 till that you have to enlarge the apex once it is done you can do the stepping back procedure with 30 and 35 by reducing 1 mm so once it is done your preparation is done so step down preparation it has three phases coronal axis that is gaining axis into the radicular portion once you gain access into the radicular option a portion then you are preparing the coronal and middle third of the root with the help of h file and gates glidden once it is done you can go for the working length once working length is confirmed you are going for the apical preparation by step back procedure next is crown down technique early coronal flaring gate screen drills is followed by a incremental removal of dentin from coronal to apical direction hence it is called as crown down technique and straight k files are then used in large to small sequence with a reaming motion with no apical pressure so it is called as pressureless technique then crown down pressureless technique resulted in rounder canal shapes when compared to the step back technique so basically crown down techniques are used in engine driven files basically your rotary instruments so first the coronal portion is enlarged coronal part of the root is enlarged then middle third then comes for the apical preparation it's quite opposite of what you do in step back technique first you have to gain a straight line access to the root canal system after that access cavity is filled with irrigant then 
pre-flaring of the coronal third of the canal using gate sclid and drill. So in a rotary instrument, for example, if you take pro taper, the same process is happening. You have to get a straight line axis. After that, coronal flaring with the help of SX. It is the same function what the gate sclid does. Then comes the establishment of the working length. So for that, you have to check the patency of the canal with a small size instrument. It can be 6, 8 and 10. So negotiate the working length with a small size instrument. Then once it is done, you can go for the working length establishment with the higher size file, either 10 or 15. Sometimes if you take it with a 10 size file, you won't be able to see in the radiographs so that it is better to go for the size 15. So preoperative measurement should be taken from the preoperative IOPA then you go for the working length according to the Ingalls method. Once it is done preparation of the coronal third can be done with the help of larger files. So if you talk about pro taper you have SX, S1 and S2 which is used for the coronal and middle third enlargement. So preparation of the coron coronal third is done with the SX and followed by the preparation of the middle third with the S1 and S2 is done. Once it is done, you go for the apical preparation which is commonly in pro, pro taper the finishing files that is F1, F2 and F3. So the apical preparation of the canal is prepared with the either one of the files and you can decide the width of the canal by using the initial file which binds to the apex of the tooth for example normally a 10 size file will bind towards the apex in molars so you can go up to f1 in certain cases if the canal is quite big width of the canal is quite big you can go for the higher size so that's about the crown down preparation so you have to get a straight line axis after that you can enlarge the orifice then coronal portion middle third and finally the apical preparation is done that is crown down preparation so a few advantages of crown down techniques are straighter access to the apical portion of the canal and eliminates the tendinal interference from the coronal one third then uh, debris and pulp tissue and microorganisms are removed before apical instrumentation so there won't be any pushing of debris beyond the apox, apex then allows deeper penetration of irrigating solution and working length is less likely to the change so these are the few advantages of crown down over the step back next is balance force technique so balance force technique it's a step one is after pressureless insertion of a K file, the instrument is rotated clockwise that is 90 degrees using only the light apical pressure. Step two, the instrument is rotated counterclockwise 180 to 270 degrees. Sufficient apical pressure is used to keep the file at the same insertion depth during this step. Dentin shavings are removed with a characteristic clicking sound. Then the third step. This step is similar to step 1 and advance the instrument more apically. You have to give a small apical pressure and a 90 degree turn is given. Then the last step that is after 2 or 3 cycles the file is loaded with tendinal debris and is removed from the canal with a prolonged clockwise rotation. That is you can give a 360 turn and take it outside. Then you can see your fluids are filled with tendinal shavings that is all about the balance force technique coming to the hybrid technique so hybrid technique as you said it's a combination of step back and crown down technique it uses both rotary and hand instruments hand instruments secure a pattern glide path it is always important to do a glide path before doing any instrumentation inside the canal during cleaning and shaping then tapered rotary instruments efficiently enlarge coronal areas and step back is performed till middle third to obtain a continuous taper preparation. So from the coronal portion the canal 
is made enlarged with a great taper so you can do a step back easily without any locking of files so that is about hybrid technique coming to the method so first you have to prepare the axis and you should have a straight line axis into the canal like you do for the crown down technique once you have the ground straight line axis then check the patency of the canal with a smaller size file after that coronal tree enlargement with gates gliden or you can use the rotary if you are using a rotary files you can use the rotary file then you have to enlarge the coronal surface of the canal once it is done establish the working length once was working length is decided you can go for the master bracket preparation you do in step back once it is done you do the step back a bracket step back and rotary preparation you can use for the middle third and coronal third of the canal then merging of the coronal preparation and the apical step back is done so basically as i said it's a combination of step back and step down technique so canal patency is checked after that coronal enlargement working length is decided once working working length is established go for the coronal enlargement and middle third enlargement followed by the apical step back then merge it that's about the hybrid technique it's the easiest one so but commonly nowadays which is used is crown down technique and step back technique next is general consideration given by american association of endodontics initial canal exploration is always performed with a smaller size file to gauge canal size shape and configuration basically a 6 8 and 10 should be used initially to check the patency then second files are always manipulated in a canal filled with an irrigant or lubricant present copious irrigation is used between each instrument in the canal you have to continuously irrigate the canal during the course of cleaning and shaping coronal pre flaring will reduce procedural errors such as loss of working length and canal transportation apical canal enlargement is gradual using sequentially larger files from apical to coronal regardless of flaring technique then debris is loosened and dentin is removed from all walls on the circumferential filing or with a reaming action at or close to working length regardless of technique after each insertion the file is removed and the floats are cleaned of debris the file can then be reinserted in the canal to the plane the next wall so basically the students miss this step why i am telling you most of the time when you do the cleaning and shaping make sure you take out the file from the canal irrigate then after that check the floats remove any debris present with the help of a gauze once you remove it then you take the file again into the canal the canal is effectively clean only where the files actually contact and plane the walls in accessible regions are poorly cleaned or deprived recapsulation is done to loosen debris by rotating the master apical file or a smaller size file at the corrected working length followed by irrigation to mechanically remove the material this step also most of the time we miss it over enlargement of curved canals by files attempting to straighten themselves will lead to procedural errors over preparation of canal walls towards the perforation may result in stripping perforation in danger zone where root dentin is thinner so if there is a curvature especially in molars the perforation area of the canal you have to make sure you have to cut the opposite side because if you are not considering the perforation area and try to do the preparation you might end up in strip perforation of the danger zone that is basically the canal surface which is close to the perforation area 
instruments, irrigants, debris and obturating material should be contained within the canal. These are all non-physical or chemical irritants that will induce periradicular inflammation and may delay or compromise healing. This is the importance of anatomic apex. You should know where your obturation or your working length should terminate. That is your minor apical diameter. Anything goes beyond that will act as a irritant and causes periradicular irritation or inflammation. Creation of an apical stop may be impossible if the apical foramen is already very large. So if there is a blunderbuss canal or the canal apex is too big, always go for the apexification or you have to make sure you have a apical plug. It can be in the form of GP or if it is quite wide, you can go for the MTA. Forcing or locking files into dentin produce unwanted torsional force. This tends to untwist, wrap up, either will weaken and break the instrument. So again, if you are forcing the instrument, you are not supposed to force the instrument into the canal. If you are doing it, it might lock into the dentin and it might end up in fracture of the instrument or weaken the tooth surface okay that's about uh, today's lecture i hope you all understood that if you have any doubts you can contact me thank you